Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Ksenia. In today's video, I will be doing a book review of My Antonia by Willa Cather. I just finished this book and it gave me the biggest book hangover I've had in a while. The characters, the setting, the distinct sensitivity of Willa Cather. It was really, really original and I'm sure it's going to stay with me for a long time. It touched the topics of gender stereotyping, <laughs> the pioneering spirit and how America was built by pioneers. It touched the topic of like connecting with nature and how those pioneers had a very beautiful connection. And Willa Cather, having lived in Nebraska for a while, she really captured it really, really deeply. But the thing that most stayed with me as I was finishing the book was the, like this really deep feeling of nostalgia and how memories can stay with us for very long periods of time and how in the end memories are maybe one of the only things that stay with us because people die, we move a lot, we lose jobs, we move between many different things, activities, people, and we have very limited space in our lives. But the memories that we form in these places, the people that really resonate with us, we kind of still carry uh, them with us for a long time. And she really captured that beautiful, lasting effect of memories. One of the quotes on page 197 is, in the course of 20 crowded years, one parts with many illusions. I did not wish to lose the early ones. Some memories are realities and are better than anything that can ever happen to one again. I thought that was so beautiful. And overall, this book, it's this way that it was structured was very interesting. And the introduction made me kind of be aware of these things earlier. So I guess maybe it did precondition me a little bit. But the narrator is a man. His name is Jim Burden. And he meets this new immigrant family who are very poor, who moved to the next door farm. So this book is a romance. And the guy visits... The woman after 20 years. That's like the ending of the book. And it's very interesting to consider why was the narrator a man and why didn't he marry my Antonia, you know? It's very interesting to see that the reasons aren't really clear. And one of the reasons is that he is like four years younger than her, which seems to be kind of mentioned as a reason, but that's not, doesn't seem enough convincing to me. The other reason seems to me that he might have been like Willa Cather in that he was kind of bored by country living and there's a scene where he just goes around and talks to like cigar makers and other shop vendors and he's just bored he doesn't know how to entertain himself and when he goes off to school he gets fascinated by ideas and by writing and eventually becomes a lawyer so there is maybe that kind of gap in a more sophisticated like education that's back then in the countryside it was harder to get an education and Antonia actually doesn't even really want to get an education. She skips out of school and says that she's more useful on the farm. I mean, maybe she does it more out of necessity than because she doesn't want to learn, but it doesn't interest her and it definitely interests him a lot. So that's my theory for why, if you don't know who the author is and what her background is, you could kind of project those reasons on Jim's not proposing to Antonia. But after reading the introduction and keeping in mind that Willa Cather was a lesbian and she was probably drawn to a straight woman at some point, 
it kind of gives it a whole different lens to look at. And the name burden. Like it was kind of a burden to carry this sensitivity, this love, this... <laughs> I don't know. It's not clear and leaves a lot of room for discussion. But also, Jim's... Once I became aware of these things, I was realizing that sometimes Jim's view of Antonia is a bit feminine in quality. Like, I think men would pay attention to some other details. It's very, it's very beautifully sensitive. Of course, I'm not going to speak on the behalf of men. I do not know <laughs> how sensitive some guys are how what exactly detail what details stand out to them the most but at times i did feel like her admiration the narrator's his admiration for antonia was a bit feminine in character let me cite a quote towards the end antonia had always been one to leave images in the mind that did not fade that grew stronger with time in my memory, there was a succession of such pictures fixed there like the old woodcuts of one's first primer. Antonia coming in with her work team along the evening skyline, she lent herself to immemorial human attitudes which we recognize by instinct as universal and true. I had not been mistaken. She was a battered woman now, not a lovely girl, but she still had that something which fires the imagination could still stop one's breath for a moment by a look or a gesture that somehow revealed the meaning in common things. She had only to stand in the orchard to put her hand on a little crab tree and look up at the apples to make you feel the goodness of planting and tending and harvesting at last. All the strong things of her heart came out in her body that had been so tireless in serving generous emotions. It was no wonder that her son stood, straight, stood tall and straight. She was a rich mine of life, like the founders of early races. It's very idealized. Like she's the earth mother who just nourishes all these generations. And that's like her inherent quality. Catherine gives a certain dignity and respect to people who work with the earth, who have a connection to the earth. Antonia says quite a few times that she does not feel alone. She does not feel sad when she's nourished by the earth. And that cities, she cannot picture herself in cities because it does bring that sadness and disconnection. So even though Willa Cather ended up spending the later part of her life in New York City, which is where I'm from, but she also very much remembered the beauty and the worth in the earth. So for this, the publishing of this novel, which was like 130 years ago, it's very attentive to the difference between cities and the natural landscape and it glorifies the natural landscape in a way that is very worthwhile now too i think you know i do think so many fewer people would have depression and would feel disconnected lost and lonely if they had access to nature and the quotes throughout of nature are just breathtaking the great plains that plain grass that she just adores there's a quote on page 192 which says in that singular light every little tree and shock of wheat every sunflower stalk and clump of snow on the mountain drew itself up high and pointed the very clods and furrows in the fields seemed to stand up sharply i felt the old pull of the earth the sullen magic that comes out of these fields at nightfall I wished I could be a little boy again and that my way could end there. Yeah, she is not, or at least she doesn't seem very fond of cities. She kind of portrays them as a place which does not 
nourish authentic beautiful expression it's too constricted and that the people who grew up as the child the children of immigrants they grew up stronger and kind of just more interesting and full of this kind of life and smarter even yeah i think that's some point she said smarter i'm not sure no, don't quote me. but there's this part where he goes to the city and he says the life that went on in them seemed to me made up of ev evasions and negations shifts to save cooking to save washing and cleaning devices to propitiate the tongue of gossip this guarded mode of existence was like living under a tyranny People's speech, their voices, their very glances became furtive and repressed. Every individual taste, every natural appetite was bridled by caution. The people asleep in these ho houses, I thought, tried to live like the mice in their own kitchens, to make no noise, to leave no trace, to sleep over the surface of things in the dark. That's very critical, it seems to me, of cities even though in the same page actually she criticizes it from T jim burton's perspective as like the countryside having limited social interactions limited engaging conversations but overall she she's just very critical of cities and she portrays the beauty of the countryside very very convincingly so this book is also beautiful for its set of characters that kind of rise above all gender stereotyping. There's her friend Rita, Rita, sorry, Lena, and her eventual husband, who actually ends up leaving the city to be with her, even though he's kind of feminine in some qualities. It's it's good at showing. And for its time, it's very revolutionary, actually, in showing that there can be a world beyond these rigid gender divisions, rigid ideas of what each gender is supposed to be like. And Antonia's physical strength is admired, but also is her bravery and her big heart and her just overall richness as a person. And the, the, that friend of hers, she goes on to become an independent woman who refuses to marry, who has her own business, and who stays very independent. So there are a lot of different characters, and the, each of these characters honestly deserve a book of their own. <laughs> but there are many characters here that are very different from what was expected, and their portrayal is very different. And... Willa Cather overall just does an amazing job at creating a rich world with these characters, a kind of gender neutral utopia, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, here's a picture of humanity that stops limiting people on the basis of their gender and who lets anyone be and do what they're called to do. Whether it's having a personal, having an individual business, being a somewhat sensitive man who isn't interested in physical labor. Like Antonia's father, he was a musician. And when he comes to this new place, it kind of kills him because he doesn't, he's not used for too hard physical labor and working the farm and he misses the company of the musicians he played with, all that kind of rich intellectual conversation. All of these interests, all of these ways of being, all of these lives, all of these vacations, they have a place. They have a worth. And she portrays that very beautifully. We feel a lot of sympathy for her father. We feel a lot of sympathy for most of the characters in it. And their multifacetedness, their nuanced being and... Of course, it, this world was very harsh for women. Women did get abused and ended up settling for men who really hurt them. But 
she portrays a lot of good people living their simple lives. She gives a kind of nobleness to these pioneers, to their hard work. And it's, it's, it must have been very revolutionary for his time, for sure. But I look forward to reading more of her work. I'm going to be reading The Song of the Lark sometime before the year's over. <laughs> and I'll let you know what I think of that book. I would really highly recommend her for sure. And I'll talk to you in my next video. If you read her, if you have any thoughts, if you disagree with me, let me know. Until next time, bye.